Today, AMD quietly changed the specs of their APUs, Intel's flooding the market with A750 GPUs, NVIDIA's game-changing tech is here, and AMD's 7800X3D destroys in games? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD has recently changed some of the specs of their upcoming 7040HS APUs. For those who don't know, their upcoming Phoenix-based APUs are set to not only be based on AMD's new Zen 4 architecture, but also include an RDNA 3 GPU with up to 12 CUs. So these bad boys are set to be pretty powerful when it comes to gaming off an integrated GPU. Well, unfortunately, AMD seems to have quietly changed a couple things about their upcoming parts last minute. For one, if you remember a little while back, AMD shared this slide, which showed that Phoenix would come with support for PCI Express 5.0. Yet now, when you go to their site, you can see that it only supports PCI Express 4.0. Now, this obviously isn't a huge deal, but it's still annoying that they said one thing and changed it to something worse later. Next, they actually lowered the clocks of their integrated GPUs. As you can see in this archived version of the spec page for AMD's 7940HS, it says the graphics graphics frequency is 3000 megahertz, yet in their updated version, it's now 2800 megahertz. In fact, every 1040HS APU is seeing clocks lowered by 200 megahertz. And once again, I don't think the spec change is a huge deal, but the fact that they quietly changed it like this is an issue. Let me be clear, I don't think AMD intentionally had the wrong specs before to make their parts look better than they are. I mostly think they're having communication issues between their different teams, but this is definitely something that they need to fix and soon. Now when you're ready to take your love of PC hardware to the next level by learning how they actually work, there's no other place I recommend more than this video sponsor. Brilliant! Really, they're the best place to learn computer science interactively. I mean, they were built to teach the STEM field, so that means math, science, and computer science. And with thousands of lessons from AI to data center, neural networks, and more, they've got anything you could want. I mean, they have a full course on computer memory, how it accesses files, memory mapping, libraries, caching, it's all here. I just love how easy it is to learn really difficult concepts because they start small and get you to do it yourself along the way. It just makes things way easier to understand. And what's great is that Brilliant recently began offering a full 30-day free trial. I'm not sure how long it'll last, so make sure to visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld soon. And when you use my link, Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld. Next up for today, it looks like Intel is flooding markets with their ARC A750 GPUs. In a new report from Video Cards, they found that Intel's new GPUs have dropped to 250 pounds in the UK. And in fact, while looking at prices, Video Cards found that one French retailer actually has a whopping 1,233 cards in stock, and that's only of the limited edition A750. Now, their prices aren't the best, but it seems pretty clear from this that Intel is shipping tons of their GPUs, so we may see prices drop even more soon. In fact, the 3050 is selling for 300 pounds in the same store that the A750 is 250 pounds, yet the A750 beats the 3060 on average, so this is definitely looking like a good buy for those in the area. Either way, it's nice to see that Intel isn't holding production of their GPUs back, and instead are sending out parts left and right. Next up, if you own one of NVIDIA's 30 or 40 series cards, they finally released their game-changing tech. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, not long ago, NVIDIA announced RTX Video Super Resolution, which basically uses AI to upscale video that you're streaming. Like I said in that video, this is a big deal because it means you can do things like watch older videos at much better quality, and potentially even do things like watch Netflix in 4K without their more expensive subscription. At the time, we were just waiting on a driver. Well, NVIDIA's finally released it, and it does in fact work with things like Netflix and Hulu. So you you can essentially get upscaled 4K with just a 1080p subscription. And so far, the tests have shown that it does fairly well, especially when going from 1080p to 4K. It's not as good with things that have fast-moving objects like sports, but it's still not bad. If you have one of their supported cards, the feature is not turned on automatically. You have to go into NVIDIA's control panel under Adjust Video Image Settings and check Super Resolution under RTX Video Enhancement. Also, you'll need a supported browser, but overall, this is definitely an exciting new feature. 
And lastly for today, while AMD just released their 7950X3D and 7900X3D, their 8-core 7800X3D won't be coming until April. Well, it looks like the company may have waited to release their 7800X3D as purely a business decision. The reason is because Tech Power Up ran some benchmarks with the non-3D VCache chiplet disabled on the 7950X3D. This effectively makes it a 7800X3D. Remember that the 7800X3D is set to be a single 8-core 3D VCache chiplet, so this gives us a great idea of what to expect out of the 7800X3D. And let's just say it's pretty shocking. Before I get to the gaming though, in professional workloads, you can see that the CCD1 disabled core effectively gets slightly worse performance than the 7700X and 7700, but not a big difference. It's still fairly close in most benchmarks. While the CCD0 disabled actually performs better than the 7700X and 7700, and that's because the CCD1 is the chiplet without 3D vCache. And because the 7950X3D gets higher clocks on that chiplet than the 7700X, it does a bit better. Yet when CCD1 is disabled, we're left with the 3D vCache chiplet. Next, when it comes to gaming, wow. The simulated 7800X3D actually beats the 7900X3D and even the 7950X3D in every resolution. Now, unless CPU bound 1440p and 4K, the 13900K eases out a win, but we're talking less than 1%. And TechSpot did something similar with even bigger results. And remember that the 7800X3D is set to release for $450, while the 13900K is over 580 bucks. Not only that, but when it comes to power consumption, the simulated 7800X3D destroys everything. In games, it pulled an average of 44 watts, while the 13900K was over triple that at 143 watts. Even the 13600K pulled 89 watts. Basically, the 7800X3D is gearing up to be one of the best gaming chips ever. With that said, it may get slightly lower clocks in the simulated version because the 7950X3D with 3D vCache gets around 5.1 to 5.2 5 gigahertz, while the 7800X3D has a boost of 5 gigahertz. But they have the same base clock, and a few percent slower clocks likely won't make a huge difference. At the end of the day, the 7800X3D is definitely an exciting CPU. So while that does it for today, are you ready for AMD's 7800X3D or are you more excited for Nvidia's new upscaling tech? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!